Welcome to Talk of the Nation. I'm location at beautiful Allegiant Stadium, the San Manuel Club. I'm JT. It's playoff football in December. Throw out the first 13 weeks. Don't talk to me about the past two weeks. We all know the Raiders need to play better. You got to beat the Colts. The Silver and Black are back home for three in a row. Coming up on the show, we have the great Phil Villapiano, a Super Bowl champion, and another in Will Blackman. But our first guest is Vinny Bonsignor from the Las Vegas Review Journal. And Vinny, let's jump in. All the talk this week was about Greg Williams and that zero blitz. What about the execution by the Raiders to make that big play in New Jersey at MetLife and win the game? Yeah, and that's what I've been trying to uh, point out to people. Uh, it's not as easy as, oh, they zero blitz, so that should be an easy throw and catch. Uh, anything but. And in fact, uh, Greg Williams was this close to being a genius uh, because they nearly got uh, to Derek Carr. But uh, a great blocking scheme, being on the same page, uh, Derek understanding what was getting ready to happen, communicating it throughout his lineup, just you know the offensive lineman, tight end Darren Waller, Jalen Richard, uh, the running back who picked up a blitz. Uh, and then for Henry Ruggs, who was having a difficult day, to have the wherewithal and the presence to stick with it and stay with it and be on the same page as Derek. That wasn't an easy gimme type of a play. It took every all 11 players to being, be on the same page to execute it. And then of course, uh, you know, uh, capped off with Derek Carr making a great move up in the pocket, uh, a hectic pocket to buy himself just a little bit more time. And then the jump throw uh, to Henry Ruggs 50 yards down the field for the game winning touchdown. So. Definitely, it was a curious call by Greg Williams, but the Raiders still had to execute, and, and they deserve credit for that. Vinny, I know Coach Gruden talked with you about the run game. The Raiders have to run the ball, and they got to get Trent Brown going. He's been practicing with Josh Jacobs and that injury. Whoever's going to run it has to run it big this last four games, this stretch run. No question about it. The Raiders, in their seven wins, are averaging about 140 yards rushing. Uh, in their five losses, it's about 82, 83 yards rushing. So that tells you right there what the recipe is to win. And I know a lot of, uh, you know, Raider fans uh, were, were a little frustrated uh, in the second half with John Gruden continuing to try to run the ball. Uh, thought they got a little bit vanilla, thought they took the, you know, the foot off the gas. Well, in reality, that's how the Raiders win. They've milked out games, uh, victories uh, this year by doing exactly that. The problem was they couldn't get it going and that, you know, Sometimes you're more upset with the result than the actual plan. That is the Raiders' plan to win, and it's vital that they get back to it starting this week against the Colts, who are pretty good against the run and everything else defensively. So hopefully uh, for the Raiders getting Trent Brown back, we'll see about Josh Jacobs. But one way or another, they need to figure out a way to get that blueprint, that, that, that recipe back, uh, and it means running the ball and running it well. Well, I loved all the targets that Darren Waller got, 200 yards. What a performance. Did that open it up more as defenses key on him and maybe get more looks for Ruggs and Renfro and Aguilar coming into this game against the Colts? Yeah, I would think so. And, and if you, it, what was really astute by Derek Carr, John Gruden, and Darren Waller is they, uh, you know, the, the Jets took away a lot of what Hunter Renfro likes to do in the middle of the field. So there was some stuff that was going on over there that people weren't really picking up on. And kind of interestingly and probably, uh, you know, uh, not very well thought out, it left Darren Waller uh, available on a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverages. That was kind of a curious, another curious call by Greg Williams, but the Raiders recognized that. And 13 times they targeted, well, it was actually more than 13 times. They threw it to him probably about 15, 16 times. They completed 13 for 200 yards and two touchdowns. So uh, it's it kind of epitomizes the Raiders pass game and Derek Carr being kind of that point guard quarterback uh, the guy that's open is going to get the ball. And in this case, it was Darren Waller. It could very well be Hunter Renfro against the Colts or maybe Henry Ruggs or Brian Edwards or Nelson Aguilar. That's the beauty of this offense. The ball, the, the plan is predicated to get it to the open guy, the favorable matchups. Uh, last week, it was it was Darren Waller. Could be him again this week. Uh, but there's a lot of weapons on this Raiders team, and Derek Carr is doing a really good job of spreading the ball around. All right, Vinny, let's get into the Colts. Phillip Rivers, he's played the Raiders more than any player in the history of the NFL. This organization, they know Phillip Rivers. They're a big team. They're very physical. What jumps out at you? Yeah, uh, the, 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 the size and athletic ability of that defense, they kind of jump off the, the tape a little bit uh, defensively. They've done a really good job, the Colts have, of, uh, of, of you know building that defense to make it a playoff caliber defense. So the Raiders are certainly going to have their work cut out for them, uh, managing 
that. Uh, when you look at Philip Rivers, you know, and, and look, we've been on the West Coast a long time. We've seen Philip Rivers a lot. Uh, the one thing, as great as he is, he's susceptible to making mistakes, especially when you get pressure on him. Uh, he's the second highest uh, interceptions in terms of career uh, active quarterbacks right behind Drew Brees. 206, I think it is, or 204 in 240 games. That includes the six interceptions that the Raiders had in two games last year and the nine that he has this year. If you can get pressure on on Phillip Rivers, uh, he's got a tendency to make mistakes, try to play a little bit of hero ball uh, and, and make some throws that he probably wishes he had back after the game. If the Raiders can get him into a position where they can cause a couple of turnovers, it's certainly gonna help their, their, their offense. Otherwise, if you give him a clean pocket, He's too smart uh, and too savvy uh, not to take advantage of that. So incumbent on the Raiders to somehow, some way, figure out a pass rush to get to Phillip Rivers. What about head coach Frank Wright? What are his tendencies? He wanted Rivers. He wanted a veteran. They're on a Super Bowl run. They want to win with Rivers in one year. Maybe they bring him back. What do we need to know about their head coach? Yeah, I'm glad you bring him up. You know, uh, we kind of get caught up in all the geniuses, all the hot names and everything like that. But Frank Reich has quietly gone about uh, building a really good, solid football team. Do they do things really fancy? No, they don't, but they get the job done. And they're they're pretty, uh, you know, it's a tightly run ship. Uh, they don't make a lot of mistakes, uh, short of Philip Rivers trying to uh, do too much every once in a while. And, and I think Frank Reich has actually done a pretty good job reining Philip in. Uh, and that's a case where it's a quarterback who totally respects his head coaches and is going to listen uh, to him and do what he says. That's not necessarily always been the case uh, with Philip Rivers, but it certainly is with Frank Reich, who he has a lot of respect for. So just a good, solid football team, a playoff caliber football team that's coming to Allegiant Stadium, and the Raiders have to play almost mistake-free football uh, to beat this team. They've done it before. They've done it plenty of times before. The Raiders uh, are 3-0 and against teams with a 30-6 and uh, you know, record when you're talking about the Browns, the Chiefs, uh, and the New Orleans Saints. They've shown they can beat good teams, and I wouldn't uh, be surprised. And in fact, I expect them uh, to put up a really good uh, uh, game and fight and effort against these Colts. This is a playoff game, like you mentioned. December defines who's in, who's not, who's a pretender, uh, who's a fraud. And I think the Raiders are ready to make that stand and prove that they are worthy of the playoffs. Thanks, Vinny. We're always reading your content and listening on Raider Nation Radio. Coming up, former Super Bowl champ Will Blackman joins us on Talk of the Nation. This has been brought to you by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now, only at Allegiant.com. Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Intermountain Healthcare, helping people live the healthiest lives possible. Presented by San Manuel Casino, official Southern California casino of Allegiant Stadium. Welcome back to Talk of the Nation. Will Blackman joins us, 12-year NFL vet, safety Super Bowl champ. And Will, great to see you again. We want to begin with the Henry Ruggs catch that went viral as the Raiders beat the Jets. Walk me through that play from your safety perspective. Well, First of all, from my analyst perspective, I was waiting for that play for Ruggs all game, even though he had, you know, the, the fumble and what have you. I'm like, gosh, they are prime. The Jets are prime for some sort of play action to send him deep. I know they threw one. Uh, they missed it for Aguilar, uh, which was he was wide open in that one. Um, and Derek can make that throw. And obviously he has. But from a safety perspective, <laughs> I'm when I heard the call, if, if it was zero, which everyone saw, then I'm like, listen, we got to get out of this call. But as a cornerback, I know, like, listen, like, just protect it deep. Like, there's no reason to jump the double move. So, yeah, as a defensive back, man, it's like, come on now. Like, we, we know where the issues are, so there's no reason to jump the double move because we just need to hold them. We don't need to make an interception. Speaking of young defensive backs, Trayvon Mullen, Jonathan Abram. Raiders have a young secondary, but a couple of players that have shown flashes of great play. Let's talk about those two. Yeah, no, I, I think I think those guys are awesome and excellent. We're, we're wonderful uh, draft picks by Mayock. It's just a matter, especially with Abrams, man, is like, man, he he just, just his health, man, that's important. That's, that's probably the most important asset for any football player because the injury rate is 100%. And he's such a stud. He's such an amazing player. And yet, as long as you can just find a way to, to be healthy, that's going to help. You know, that's why, you know, you have guys out there like the, the team captain in term, and Eric Harris, like he's healthy, you know, he's available. And that's the and that's the best thing. Sometimes your 
your best ability is availability. And I look at someone like, you know, like like a Byron Jones on, in Miami. Like he doesn't have a lot of interceptions, but he's available. You know, that that's a big deal, uh, especially how important uh, those two guys are to the team. We're spending a lot of time this week talking about Phillip Rivers. You went up against him. He's got a foot injury. He doesn't get outside the pocket as much, but he is a competitor. No one's played the Raiders in the history of the league as much as him. Gruden's ready to go. This defense knows that Rivers doesn't have much time left in the league, but they know they're going to get full Phillip Rivers. Tell us about the quarterback of the Colts. Yeah, he does have a foot injury, but for those – Raider fans, they know that Phillip actually has played with the torn ACL, too. So the foot injury, you know, it's even worse than a foot injury. He has a lot of children. So that's another issue is that he's not worried about that foot injury. Uh, but, yeah, I, I love playing against Phillip. He's easily the one of the most re well-respected men in the history of the game. Uh, th the thing that's going to be interesting is I think the Raiders, they need to pay attention just to his first 15 plays. He always comes out the gate you know, 12 straight completions, 15 straight completions, because he has all these new uh, ways he, or new plays that he's trying to really ch try to find how you are. He's going to be real efficient. So right now, every, they're 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 doing very well in terms of, like, getting the ball out to the running backs. You know, they have really good running backs that are receivers. Um, and then T.Y. showed up last week. So you're going to have to pay attention to more a lot because you can tell that this team, especially offensively, uh, they're they're getting it together, and, and, that, and that's a big deal for them. And that's what's you know that's what can be dangerous. Well, you played 12 seasons in the league. I just wanted to ask you about your respect for the Raider Nation from afar as a player in this league, this organization. Uh no, I I love it. First of all, I fight to the death about Raiders have the best uniforms in the entire league. So that is that is my that is my opinion. I love the history uh, of the Raiders. Actually, my first poster was Lyle Zotto his, he had, when he was holding up the Redskin jersey. That was actually the first poster that my father has ever given me was that wow. iconic uh, poster right there. And then, yeah, I, I grew up, you know, I was a huge Woodson fan. So the fact that, you know, Raiders there, my best friend is a diehard Raiders friend. He actually moved from Rhode Island to Vegas, and he, <laughs> he is right there in Las Vegas. So the fact that you guys moved to Vegas, my childhood best friend is there. So, no, tons of respect, tons of history for the Raiders. Now, sorry we have no wine for this interview, but I saw you and Charles Woodson this week on Instagram talking football and enjoying some Intercept wines. Tell us about that and what you're doing these days. No, it, it was super cool. Um, Charles has been real instrumental in, in my passion for wine simply because it was really, when I, when I got uh, drafted to Green Bay and when he signed the same year, 2006, it was really cool to see somebody who looked like me, who was in the same field as me, who really enjoyed wine because wine always comes across as this untouchable field, you know, and obviously that's not the case uh, when when you guys used to have a training camp there in Napa. And and that's why that's why my passion grew and got to and got to really uh, get to where it is. So just to continue to connect with Charles, he and I still talk all the time and still hang out uh, when he comes to California. So I think it was awesome to highlight what he's doing because he's really making a change with his intercept wines and then that's my role in the wine industry i'm the middleman I'm, I'm the educator i'm the connector i'm the person i'm the plug that people say you know what i'm saying when it comes to the wine world so i've been fortunate to get my w set level three uh and i just i had my quarter masters level one certification so yeah wine wine is everything for me man continued success will we love the fact that you came on. Thanks for joining us. When we come back, one of the great Raider defenders of all time, the great Phil Villapiano, joins us on Talk of the Nation. Brought to you by Modelo, setting the gold standard for authentic Mexican beer since 1925. Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Welcome back to Talk of the Nation, one of the greatest all-time Raider linebackers, Phil Villapiano, kind enough to join us. And, Phil, let me jump right in. How did you feel when Ruggs caught that game-winning touchdown against the Jets? Uh, <laughs> uh, that's how I felt. I was absolutely, totally amazed. I was so happy. I, I, I don't know how we could have lived with ourselves if we didn't win a game. So uh, I was very, very happy. I I mean, I like Derek Held. You know, he he could have quit the, 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 on the down before, but, man, they came right back and went, went after him. And uh, I was very, very happy. 
We needed that win. You know, we got that other crazy win against, uh, I think it was, um, I want to call him San Diego, but <laughs> Los Angeles Chargers. Remember at the, the last play of the game? Yes. Beautiful defensive play. We, we, we got the right. We didn't get the bad call. That's twice that's happened to us this year. I remember the year we won the Super Bowl, JT. We were in Chicago. They kicked the field goal to beat us. It bounces off the post. We, you know, it was a lot of weird things happen when you're going to be a Super Bowl champ. Phil, you played in so many big games. What advice would you give these players, these young players, down the stretch with four games to go? Well, I'm going to say you got, you know, and I don't want to tell these guys to stay in and not go out and have parties and have a good time because I think that's what the Raiders are made of. But I want to see them hustle on Sunday. They got to play 60 minutes. They got to gang tackle people. You can't leave it up to one person anymore. The, the, the plays are so big. One missed tackle, they get a touchdown, you, you get ruined for the day. We got to play a more vicious and we got to play more wild and we got to run and we got to leave it on the field. That's how you win win these big games down the stretch. You just you, you just can't wait around and hope that you know we score three touchdowns and hope that uh, our beautiful tight end could catch seven balls in a row and all this crazy stuff. Go take these games. That's what I would tell them. Go take it. Fu, you're really tight with John Gruden. The first time Coach Gruden was hired, then on the second swing, and he reached out to you up in Napa to talk to the team. You got a great relationship with Coach Gruden. Tell us about that. Well, John, John is just uh, he, 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 my type of guy. I remember when he, when he first got hired out in Oakland, and uh, Marv Hubbard and I were uh, there was a, they had a golf tournament, and Marv and I were hanging out together. And into this bar comes John Gruden. It's midnight. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not our coach. And it was there. Was, there it was John because we had left the dinner maybe you know nine or ten. So we, we Marv and I got together with John, and from that night on, we've been pretty good buddies. And you know we we talk a lot of football. I love the way he talks football. He talks football like Al Davis used to talk football. He remembers everything, and he, and all he wants to do is win. And and you know and if you. And, when you're talking with him, he's kind of challenging you. Let's see what you know, Villapiano. You know what I mean? I love that kind of stuff because football, there's not a whole bunch of people out there that could talk football like John Gruden. And I'm very happy we got him as our guy. He knows the game. He loves the game. And he can win these games with the players. And, you know, at, at, at the level, you know, one of John Madden's big things was, hey, Phil, Players play, coaches coach, and owners own. On Sunday afternoon, the players got to play, and these kids have got to step up and play for John. He can't go out there and make the tackles for him. They got to do it. I love the guy. I think he's a, he's a winning coach. We got a couple lucky games this year, but we got a couple bad calls against us too. And I remember last year we were, we were on a run and we had Texas, the guy's falling down, throws the ball, we lose that game, and we kind of fell apart. That ain't going to happen this year. We got to win. We got to win Sunday. We know Phillip Rivers. We got to knock his head off. We got to attack him. Attack him with all 11 guys. And we're going to win this game. Hey, Phil, finally, look at this place. You love Vegas. You loved Oakland, L.A. Now the Raider Nation is in Vegas. We wish you were out here. Once the virus is over and you come out here, what do you think of this? Mark Davis, look at what he built for you, the alumni. You got your legacy brick. Tell everybody what you're doing now and how excited you are to come back to Vegas. Uh, I am, hey, 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 JT, I'm only over the mountain. I'm right in Palm Desert. I could be there in three hours, right cruising right through the desert at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> I can't wait to get there. I had my stadium tour. I could not believe what I would... But I, I, I actually had it when it was brand new, and then I had it when it was almost done. So I've been there twice. I can't wait to see the finished product. I can't wait. Me and you are having a drink in that bar 41, wherever that is. And I can't wait to, for you and I to get a table and do one of these interviews. Mark Davis made a beautiful, beautiful uh, stadium there. How And it's so fan-friendly. 
it's going to be it's going to it's going to be at least a touchdown every time you come to Vegas. You're giving up a touchdown because these fans are going to be great. The stadium's great. It's just going to be it's going to be that's going to be Raider Nation house the house stuff that Raider Nation whatever you want to call it. Thanks so much, Phil. Appreciate you doing this. When we come back, my closing thoughts on Talk of the Nation. Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill. Welcome back to Talk of the Nation. We're at Allegiant Stadium in the San Manuel Club, and we've heard Coach Gruden say it before, the best ability is availability. You would love to see the team at full strength in December playing their best ball, but that hasn't been the case. Injuries, mixing COVID, and teams across the league have been decimated. The key word this week may be opportunity. Which backup or role player will make the most out of this opportunity on the big stage in meaningful December football? Raider Nation, this is exactly what you want to see. And we get to see the Raiders battle old friend Philip Rivers. Pick him off. Dominate the time of possession. Do what the Raiders have done historically in the month of December when they sense the playoffs and they can get in. I'm JT, and for everyone at Silver and Black Productions, we're on a short week next week as the Chargers come to town on Thursday Night Football. Thanks for watching Talk of the Nation. This has been brought to you by Allegiant the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now, only at Allegiant.com. Intermountain Healthcare, helping people live the healthiest lives possible. Brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Raiders. Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders.